Tomorrow is Earth Era, where millions of people all around the world will turn off their lights to show symbolic support and raise awareness for climate change. 3D printing is wasteful. It can be very wasteful. There's no hiding this. Despite this, there are still ways that you can reduce, reuse and recycle to enjoy less waste, quicker turnaround times and money saved. Today, we're going to look at a few. First up, we'll start simple, improving your workflow to reduce waste during purges when printing multicolor. When your multicolor printer changes color, it purges the old filament so that it is removed from the hot end and your new color is not contaminated with the old one. Rather than just purge it as poop, you can set your slicer to purge in the infill of your part. Which is great, right? Well, there isn't actually a huge amount of filament saved this way unless your print is massive with lots of filament purges. What you can do is reduce the multiplier in your flushing volumes. This allows your printer to purge less filament and it works great because by default this multiplier is usually very conservative. Of course you can't go really crazy with these values and when you're checking to see if it works to make sure there's no bleed through, it's best to print a part yourself rather than checking the actual purged filament. The reason being different filament colors don't blend evenly. This is not a liquid, you're basically purging a soft solid. And often when there is a filament swap, the new color will be visible on the outside, but on the inside you might have the old color. This is just how filament works when they're being mixed. I've linked teaching text video down below about this. He goes into a lot of detail about it and there's some extra stuff too, so check it out. Okay, that's for multicolor. What if you don't have a multicolor printer, just printing single colors? Well, you have to deal with supports and rafts and brims and such, and normally that just goes in the bin. It doesn't really have to though. There are lots of DIY projects that recycle supports and failed prints, but that requires a lot of energy and quite a bit of cash to get all of this equipment up and running. I have linked the next there's video on his journey through this. It's a lot of work to do, but luckily Jonathan goes into so much detail and it's a great resource to have. You can always just ask someone to do it as well. There are groups like Recycling Fabrique in Germany that will accept filament waste from basically anyone and they use this waste to make their own filaments. If you want to go down the DIY home self recycling route, then I couldn't recommend Precious Plastic highly enough. These guys have open sourced their equipment designs and they have great guides on how to build their machines from scratch, whether they are injection molders, shredders, extruders or compressors. They're a bit of work to do, but the community based around Precious Plastic is amazing and they have chapters worldwide, so chances are there is one near you. You may have also heard about making your own filament from empty drinks bottles. There are lots of these designs around that cut a drinks bottle in a spiral shape and draw the plastic into a hot end, which extrudes it out as actual filament that you can use. These are way easier to build than say a precious plastic machine. For one, you don't need a shredder for this. This is a slow process though, so don't expect one kilo spool of filament after a day's work. Still, it's a very cool idea. Okay, what about almost out spools? So uh, we've all been through this. You have one spool of filament, but there's only like a meter left of filament on it. You can't really use that for basically anything. It's just too little. So what do you do? Yeah, you throw it out. Okay, you don't have to throw it out. There is AMSs now and MMUs. You can just put the spool in there and then use it and then swap to another spool. You can do that. Even if you don't have an AMS, you can just use the filament runout sensor to do this. But there is also the Sunlu filament connector, which enables you to join two filament strands together, which is great. But I know why people aren't entirely fond of this. You have to use a PTFE sleeve to hold and mold the strands together, and that's disposable. This wasn't the first connector out there. There was one a while back that used metal parts that could be removed and reused, but that was some time ago. And Things have changed a lot now. There are now more heat resistant filaments out there and higher temp printers that are cheaper and easier to use than say seven years ago when this came out. So I'm just thinking if something similar is possible with using a easy to use heat resistant filament like PPS. I think we'll have to try this soon. Okay, let's say you have used a filament connector, but now you got all of these empty spools. Do they go in the bin? Well, of course, you could just buy cardboard spools. Why not? That's doable. You could also reuse spools by printing a master spool and just buy refills. There are tons of designs for master spools online. No spools, nothing to throw away. If you do have old plastic spools, these can be recycled into cool storage options like this one here. 
There are also other ways that you can use your 3D printer for other recycling methods that are not just plastic recycling. Consider this print creating cardboard pulp molds so that you can make lots of different kinds of items from just old cardboard and paper. This is also a really cool project to do with kids. Earlier this week, I was actually talking to a group based in the UK called The Fixatorium. They're focused on using design and technology to help their community with things like recycling and renovation. But one thing they are working on right now is called the Petal Planter, which is using an old phone box as a community greenhouse, and it is using 3D printing to create the whole thing. Helping the environment doesn't have to be all about recycling. It can be about reducing energy and materials and reusing things that would normally go to waste and creating sustainable practices. This is just a tiny selection of ways you can reduce waste with your printer. I would invite you guys to comment down below, let us and everyone else know of any other methods that you might be aware of, perhaps some that are pretty small and just need a bit of a push to get some traction going. We'll be back with another video next week. So until then, have a great weekend and happy recycling. Later.